can I have uh, Eric come on up? So hey everybody, my name is Eric Newman, and I am a professional futurist. Uh, basically, whoa. Basically, my entire career has been about forecasting and understanding where technology is going and using that knowledge to build real-world products that can exist and be functional, useful, and profitable today. Um, in the mid-aughts, I was working at video game companies on massively multiplayer online games when that was huge, helping to make that profitable. I also worked at NASA on drones right when that was bleeding edge. And just out of college, I started a company called Decision Desk, which brought uh, digital video auditions to performing arts colleges. We are still to this day the name in that space. So really just taking the technology that is bleeding edge at the time and converting it into something real. So since I left Decision Desk, I have been building and working on and learning a lot about virtual reality and augmented reality. And uh, I, along with a lot of other people, are convinced that this is really the future of technology where we're going right now. At the moment, and this is updating about once a month, the, uh, the VR market is estimated to reach $120 billion by 2020, making it one of the fastest growing markets in technology today. So about a year ago, uh, I built a product which was an experiment. Really, it was an academic experiment, and it was designed to make it possible for people to learn and read and experience current existing media, meaning articles and images, and also future media. 360 video, 3D models, VR content. I built this as a, as a game. I put it out for the Gear VR, and it quickly, it quickly reached about 100,000 users in just a few days. A few days after that, it reached 400,000 users. And that's when I knew that I really had something to, to, to use, to look at. So I brought on my business partner, Bobby, who's here in the audience today. And uh, Bobby and I put together a hit list of the top 20 media and publishing companies in the world talking about CNN, Wall Street Journal, ABC, Time, everybody. Um, we sent out 20 emails and we got 20 meetings immediately at the top most important levels of these companies. The heads of storytelling, the heads of experimental technology, you name it, we were talking to these people. And when we got into their offices, what we discovered was, although our product was very, very interesting to them, it wasn't exactly what they wanted. They didn't want something that would help people consume VR content. They wanted something that would help them build VR content. These people think of themselves as storytellers. They think of themselves as creatives. They want to be the ones that make the content themselves. They don't want to have somebody between them and their audience. That somebody being an engineer, a game designer, a developer. Um, on top of that, all of those things take time and they take money. We're talking about industries like journalism, entertainment, where people are used to hitting the street, filming a video, writing an article, publishing it that day, not three months, not six months down the road. So we took this information and we built exactly what they were asking for. This is Sprawly. Sprawly is an authoring platform and playback system for creating immersive, interactive 360 video experiences. All you need to get started using this tool is a 360 video camera, a browser, and an internet connection. You need no special skills, you need no knowledge or understanding of virtual reality or engineering. 360 cameras right now are poised to be one of, if not the hottest product for this holiday season. Basically every major camera company has launched in the last six weeks their own 360 camera. Talk about Samsung, talk about Nikon, Kodak, all of them. And they're priced competitively. A lot of these companies see this as their opportunity to unseat the company that's been kind of kicking their butts for the last decade, which is GoPro. Um, anyway, this tool that exists is incredibly easy to use and allows you to put together pieces of content that would otherwise take a very long time, very quickly. Uh, another thing that's important to note about our content is that it can be embedded anywhere. Um, now, VR is exploding, but there are still millions of people who don't have VR headsets. That's okay. Our content can be viewed on a desktop browser, can be viewed on a mobile phone, sort of like this in what's called magic window mode. Um, and lastly, can also be viewed on cheap, middle grade, and high-end virtual reality headsets. So we've sort of got here the, uh, the cardboard, Gear VR, and the Oculus Rift. Um, so we can be viewed literally by anybody on Earth with an internet connection right now. This is really, really important, because as excited as these big media companies are about VR, they're not willing to bet the farm on a technology that not everyone in their audience can reach just yet. Okay. So 
VR today is a lot like where the internet was in the 90s. Um, it's the Wild West. There's all sorts of stuff happening. There's all sorts of technology being developed. And it's really anybody's game as far as who's going to obtain and continue to control that market. Who's going to have the power to guide its direction? Something that we see that we're poised to act on today is uh, the creation of standards. So 360 video is really just a very, very early technology. It's essentially nascent, similar to film in the early stages. Um, so we see ourselves as being able to take all this market information that we have, the fact that we have more users than almost anybody else in this space today, um, gather that information together and help use it to help us create standards with which we can leverage against the bigger players, the YouTubes, the Facebooks, et cetera. Um, I have a feeling this is going to come up a lot more when we get to the question section a little bit later. Uh, but yeah, so standards. Our customer validation pipeline is very strong. So we've talked to all these 20 companies, and so far of all of them, only one of them has made a decision about going with somebody else. All of the rest of these players are still ours for the taking. Um, some of them, like Yahoo, were very, very close to getting really just waiting on approval from the funds department. And some of the other ones uh, are even bigger, although possibly harder nuts to crack. So what I want to talk to you guys about is how we're actually going to activate this pipeline. So we have a lot of great traction. Uh, we have creators coming in from the community using our, our free tier. Um, somebody used Sprawly this year, a company called Story Up, which makes a lot of those kind of uh, social videos that you see asking for, for social change that show up on Facebook. Um, they used our tool to submit to Sundance this year. Uh, we've been used in the Seattle VR hackathons, and actually, I should update this, because a couple of other uh, hackathons have used our tool as well. Um, and we have overwhelmingly positive feedback from a very, very strong community. Community is unbelievably important today in VR. Um, those are the people that invested in the Oculus via Kickstarter. Those are the people who Facebook and Google are listening to, and uh, we definitely have their ear right now. Okay, so I was talking about how we're gonna activate that pipeline. <coughs> so we, we've recently begun to understand more and more about the psychology of the people that we need to convince to close on these sales. We already have the heads of storytelling on our side. We already have the experimental technologists on our side. The people that we need to help is them. We need to give them the content. We need to give them the tools. We need to arm them to go up to the people that control the cash inside of their companies to essentially get approval. And we've recently begun to understand more about how this works. It's not actually that complicated. We just need to provide proof and evidence, demonstration of value that our content can be viral and can be functional. Nobody wants to be the first to put this out, but everybody wants to be the first to have it. So the way that we're working on getting around this is by helping <laughs> local creators to create groundbreaking content, really top tier content that we can put out to break open this market. One such example is that we're working with the Northwest Film Forum and actually the Seattle Documentary Society uh, to put out a groundbreaking first-person documentary about living in tent cities. Um, this is a piece of content that really couldn't be put out properly in any format other than the one that we have. Uh, and I can give you guys a, a really, I think, moving example of why that is. Um, when you watch a movie, your viewpoint is guided. You see what's on the screen, and you, you feel external to it. But when you watch something in VR, when you watch something in 360, you can control your own vision. So we've actually captured a, a number of shots that we've been putting together into a trailer for this, and one of them is, is really, really moving. Um, it's, a, it's a shot where the camera is placed on the street next to a gentleman who's homeless, and the first thing that you see, this is the first shot in this documentary, the first thing that you see is people's knees. And you see these people's knees moving past you, and you're forced to do something that audiences have been, never been forced to do before, which is this have to look up. And this changes the entire experience. Um, and we're, we're finding that it, it moves people very, very quickly to empathize and understand uh, the audience, or the, the people in the documentary. Um, so we actually have a whole bunch of other stuff about traction, which I didn't get a chance to hit on, so hit me up after this. But our team is myself and uh, Bobby Alexis, who's the head of our business development. He's previously worked at Disney. Uh, he's been in, in and around a lot of the, the big media companies, and uh, he's helped us a lot at getting access to these companies at the, the top tier. And two, one, zero. <laughs> hey, everyone, how are we doing? Hey, can you hear me? Hey, 
Hey, thank you, Eric, and welcome, Bobby, as well. Um, it's uh, uh, been a great pleasure to uh, uh, do the due diligence for Sprawly. I learned a lot about uh, you know, uh, something that they're really trying to create. Um, what I really found uh, uh, interesting about uh, the, the company is that Eric is a very passionate founder, uh, and he is a very talented uh, developer. He hasn't shown you the, the uh, technology yet, uh, but um, I was really impressed. Uh, he has a fully developed product uh, that he developed on his own in the past year and a half. Uh, actually, year. more like six months. More six months. Um, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. I'm a developer myself, and I, uh, I, I, I said, wow, that he, he got all of that done in, in such a you know, short amount of time all by himself. But what made me really appreciate um, uh, the, um, the, the, the success of that is that when I uh, was evaluating the competitors, VR, um, uh, that is trying to build a similar solution, their videos wouldn't load. Uh, once they load it, uh, I, I watch it, you know, after 10 seconds, it's stopping. So I'm asking Eric, Eric, what's going on? He's saying, oh, because they haven't developed looping yet. They're a startup that has funding uh, with a staff of eight people, and they can keep up with Eric. So I, I think, you know, that, that <laughs> my vote of confidence, he knows uh, the technology stuff. Thank you. Um, so um, I think uh, the, the one concern that uh, uh, we have with the companies what, what Eric has been uh, talking about is you know, they're, they're developing uh, something totally new. Unlike other startups here who are solving a known problem, he's trying to uh, you know uh, create something new that hasn't uh, been really figured out yet. Um, so uh, it's a good question. What uh, uh, what, what what applications would be good for it? Uh, that's uh, what what what, the, what they're trying to figure out right now. And I think uh, they've covered that question very well um, uh, during the presentation, what they're trying to do about it. So maybe I can move on. You have some other stuff we can talk about. Sure, go for it. Yeah, so, so really quick, and I know, I know we're crunching on time here. So education is another big aspect, right, where, where VR and 360 video can really hit it right on the spot. So the great thing about our software is we make 360 video interactive. So video, in its sense today, is controlled by the person who produces the video. From start to finish, you and I see the same experience. We've created it so that anyone can create interactivity inside that video in the aspect of hotspots. So based on where a viewer, yeah, branching areas. So based on where I look, where I gaze, or where I move the browser, it can take me to another scene, it can overlay a web view, it can overlay a video, it can overlay an audio recording. So education is very important. And we're actually uh, really close to signing with a government in the Middle East to essentially license out our software so they can develop a whole bunch of content uh, for all ages uh, to help make education more immersive and interactive. Yeah, so to summarize, like we are putting together right now this content that is gonna lead our new marketing strategy where we're creating a piece of marquee content for a very small number of verticals. One for media, one for real estate, one for education. We're launching these things for free out for the world to see and seeing how far into each one of these different markets that piece of, of marquee content can carry us. Cool. Uh, maybe one of the questions we have time to address, so uh, what if uh, Google tries to do something like that? They're much better resource than you. Like what, what, what happens if they go into that space? So this is one of the reasons why we're working on the standards play. Um, so there are a number of other small companies like us who are gravitating towards this. We have a pretty serious lead on them right now. And this is sort of why we see that we have the opportunity to really draw the line in the sand that defines where all these other companies are going. Um, it's difficult to express how potent and how important the relationship between the community is and these big companies are right now. I can share you guys just a little anecdote, which is that about two months ago, Facebook made a decision to block their software obviously for financial reasons. And the VR community pushed back and said, no way, if you do that, we're gonna stop buying your stuff. VR, uh, sorry, Facebook reversed that decision in less than five days. So we see an opportunity to develop a standard, gather up and aggregate a lot of the power of this community and use that to leverage against Google and Facebook, saying basically like, why aren't you guys supporting the standard that we've all worked to develop? I I don't, don't think I've done for another one, so again, we can do it. Let's case. go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
expand the technology, deploy to all of the various different platform stores, which effectively increases our market share and uh, is free advertising for us. Plus, build the content. Awesome. Go and see the demo. Thank <laughs> you.